this is the eyepiece or the ocular lens, you can actually adjust it like this to um, uh, fit your eye, the width of your eyes. Um, and next, uh, there would be the stage here where we put the um, slide. And this piece of equipment here is called the nose piece. It contains um, the different magnifying lenses. You can see that they are all labeled um, differently, telling you the magnification. Uh, next, you have the very important one, the specimen holder. Right, it, there's a clip basically to hold the specimen in place and later on when you want to move it, move the, the slide, you can adjust um, certain knots which I'll show you soon. Now the next few things I'm going to show you are pretty important. Um, these are the main uh, knots that you will be fiddling with when you are trying to see something underneath the microscope. The first uh, involves the magnification and the focus. Um, so. This is the, the, if you turn the big knot over here, this is the cost adjustment knot. And if you turn this, this is the fine adjustment knot. Now the difference is that uh, for the cost adjustment knot, it moves the stage a lot. So if you can look at the stage, you see if I move the cost adjustment knot, it moves the stage quite considerably. You can even see it on the video. But if I turn the fine adjustment knot, it's a very, very fine movement of the stage. So little that you can't really see anything. Okay, so those are the, uh, the knobs that you need to turn to focus the microscope. The second group of knobs that you need to turn are called the vertical and horizontal feed knob. Now they are on this side, just below the stage. Okay, and the larger knob is the vertical feed knob. You can see that it causes the the specimen holder with the slide to move up and down vertically. Okay, um, and then also you have the horizontal feed knob, which you turn to cause the specimen to move horizontally. Okay, so that those are the two main knobs that you will need to um, adjust. Lastly, okay, sometimes you need to adjust the brightness of the light. Okay, we can do this using two different methods. One is to adjust uh, what we call the Condem the brightness adjustment knob over here. Okay, if you turn it, the light will grow dimmer or brighter as you like. Okay, and also there's also a condenser um, uh, aperture here that is just below the stage. You turn it, okay, and this basically causes the opening to open and close, okay, accordingly. So if you close it, it will have less light. If you open it, there will be more light. So we use this to um, make the images a bit brighter or a bit dimmer. Now I'm going to explain to you how to view a sample uh, from in the microscope, starting from the lowest objective, meaning the lowest magnification to the highest magnification. When we start viewing a sample, we must always start from the lowest magnification. However, before you do anything about focusing the sample, first you need to make sure the sample is in the middle of the um, stage. Okay, uh, roughly in, in the center of the hole in the middle of the stage where the light is coming from. So to do that, you use your um, vertical and horizontal feed knobs. Okay, so that your your sample is in the center where the light is coming from. Okay, then after that you can look through the um, ocular eyepiece and adjust the cost adjustment or the fine adjustment knobs so that you can see something. Okay, uh, once it's, it comes into focus, you may also still want to do a slight adjustment to make sure that the Whatever you see is now in the center of your field of vision inside um, the eyepiece. Right? So it's in the center of your field of vision. Only when the, the image is in the center of the field of vision do you increase the objective. So when you increase the objective, basically you just turn the nose piece sideways. Now the yellow one 
actually 10 times magnification is the next highest objective. Don't skip one objective, go to the very next one. Okay, and you will be able to feel that clicking um, uh, feeling, that click when you uh, get, get the, uh, mag the objective in line. And of course, you repeat the same process of adjusting your uh, cost adjustment and your fine adjustment until you can see a perfectly um, clear image. Again, sometimes we may need to adjust such that what you want to see is right in the middle of your field of vision. Again, using your vertical and your horizontal feed knobs. And then now it's re we are ready to go on to the highest objective. Now, be careful when you are turning to the highest objective because it has the longest lens. You can see that um, it's really near my, uh, my slide at the moment. Okay, so because of this, um, every time you use the highest objective, never adjust using the cost adjustment knob. Okay, try not to. Usually, it's not need, you don't need to adjust the cost adjustment once you get to the highest magnification. You just need to adjust the uh, fine adjustment and you'll be perfectly fine. And then we should have a perfectly clear image. If you want to adjust using the cost adjustment knob, you should take your eyes off the eyepiece and look at the stage just to make sure that it, the, um, the, the objective lens doesn't come crashing into your um, slide okay, and breaking the slide. So we don't want that to happen. And first, we need to um, get this, uh, this is a scale leaf of uh, onion and we need to bend it towards um, the inner epidermis. Now, um, to tell where is the inner epidermis, uh, there's one side that is more purple and more uh, dry, and there's another side that is more sticky and it's um, concave, right? So this is the inner epidermis, and we bend the, um, bend the scale leaf towards the inner epidermis, okay? So I'm going to show you that now, okay? So you hear this crunching sound. Um, after you have bent the, 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 the onion scale leaf, you will be able to see that now there's a little crease where you have bent it. Okay? And then if you peel the epidermis from the side, okay, you will be able to remove uh, quite a large piece. Like you can see I'm doing now. Okay, now that you have gotten the epidermis out, you will get a very large piece, but actually you don't need it so big. Um, so you'll need to cut it, uh, but you may ask what size we cut it into. Basically, what you should use as a gauge is um, your cover slip. So this cover slip actually goes on top of the sample. Uh, so your, um, the piece of sample that you want to cut should not be bigger than the cover slip. Because we want the cover slip to cover it fully. Right, we need two pieces, one to um, soak in the metallic blue and one to just leave it as it is. So for one of them, we'll just leave, leave them as they are. Okay, we'll view them like that under the microscope. And for the other one, um, just cover it with some metallic blue. Can use the forceps to make sure that the epidermis is well submerged. Okay, you just leave this for five minutes, after which we will take it out and wash it in water. Five minutes is over, take, take out the piece of epidermis and wash it in some tap water. After the epidermis has been washed in the water for a couple of minutes, um, now we can start with the mounting of the specimen. For the purpose of this demo, I will just show you um, the demo with the uh, epidermis that has been stained. Okay, but basically you do the same thing um, even with the epidermis that hasn't been stained. Right? Okay, first, what we do is that we introduce a drop of water onto our slide here. We just put a small drop of water in the middle of the slide. And next, we take 
the epidermis okay, and place it on top of the water. Okay, you can press it down a little bit to try to submerge the piece of epidermis. If it doesn't get submerged, that's fine. Okay, you can add another drop of small drop of water on top of it. Okay. And even after this is not submerged, then mind just push it a little bit more. Okay. And next, um, this is the uh, part where you cover the sample with a cover slip. So first, what you need to do is to angle. You don't drop the cover slip straight on the uh, sample yet. You angle the cover slip about a certain angle, 45 degrees maybe. Okay, and put um, one side of the cover slip against the the area, the center part of the slide. Okay, you can see all the water gathering there. And with a mounting needle, okay, you rest the other edge of the cover slip on the mounting needle and you lower it gently and slowly down to prevent the formation of bubbles. Okay, but as you can see, even though I was very careful, there's one big bubble over here. So that doesn't matter. Um, I just need little bit, press the sample down a little bit, okay, and you can see my, the bubble is moving away from the sample. So what is important is that the, the bubble is not on top of the sample, okay. Uh, okay. Let's try to get the bubble away. Okay, go through so now that we've gotten rid of the bubble, you can see there's a lot of water around. We don't want to wet the microscope, so we'll need to use a small piece of blotting paper and just uh, touch it to the edge of the cover slip and the excess water will automatically get absorbed. Okay, touch it to the other side also. See that the excess water is now almost all gone. Don't hold it there too long, if not it will absorb all, your, all the water. Okay, and ta-da, we have the sample already for viewing.